Environmental auditing. So I'm going to cover how and when an environmental audit is used very briefly about how you become an accredited environmental auditor. Um, some of the tricky parts about auditing and a couple of examples along the way. So I was reminded recently why that people didn't necessarily know why we were getting you to do the waste order on campus and I said it's because it gets people work. I know that it works to get people work. So this is Christoph Spear who's somebody who graduated from their Bachelor of Science and did EIA about five, oh my gosh, could even be more than five years ago now. And his graduate job that he got straight pretty much straight after he's finished was really based on the auditing experience that he got at the university. So um, he went for a great job that was with uh, Defence Australia, um, subcontracting to look after waste management, heritage sites, um, threatened species and weed management, uh, and it might have been something else, but a really good, diverse job. And having had experience in waste auditing as part of EIA was really key part of that. So I know, and this isn't an isolated example, I know that auditing helps get people work. So here's how you might become a trained auditor um, through ISO systems. And so actually, I mean, it, this does seem like a big figure, but when you think about what it gets you, um, I guess depending on whether you have to travel for this, PricewaterhouseCooper rate for four and a half days of training is just under $3,000. So, you know, for around 3000 given that you probably have to travel <clears throat> and stay somewhere if you're in Tassie to do that, still could be a pretty good investment. So environmental auditing is about a systematic examination of an environment. Uh, it might be a business. So an audit is something that you should be pretty familiar with. Um, the way that we do taxes is basically an audit. Um, the kind of, uh, yeah, there's lots of ways that we do audits in everyday life, but the environmental auditing uh, is looking for better environmental outcomes. So it's basically a measure of risk and assessment of environmental opportunity. It's a mechanism for assessing impact on the environment of usually an existing industrial commercial operation. Um, otherwise you get into environmental impact, impact assessment and risk assessment, auditing is done on existing operations. So you might audit for a whole range of reasons. You might have to do an audit because you've been told to by EPA as part of your permit conditions. You might be doing it because you're interested in efficiencies, saving money, um, saving resources. Yeah, the, there might be various triggers for it. Um, it might be part of a risk assessment. It might be part of certification. It might be because you've breached your permit conditions or you're complying with your permit conditions that you have to keep track of things. Oh, that came up last. That was weird. Um, it might be part of showing that you've done due diligence. So if there is some kind of a, an accident, a spill, an incident, you can show that you've had systems in place to try to anticipate and ameliorate any impacts. So lots of different types of audits. You might be complying with paperwork. It might be something that's imposed from further up or down the chain of command. It might be something that your employees ask you to do in the case of a university. I've been asking university management for various kind of audits for a long time. <clears throat> it might be yeah, part of some bigger process around contaminated site management. So it's auditing is basically a management tool. It's part of, can be part of an ongoing process. It might be a one-off. It's structured. It's um, usually periodic, although I mean it kind of depends what you're doing it for. It's about documenting and providing evidence. I'm a scientist in me. This really appeals to me. It's best done by an independent third party and there is 
research on this to say that it, there usually are better outcomes if it's done the auditing is done independently obviously there's it depends on how it's done and it's about providing documents that verify what's going on and evidence to to show what's going on so this could be important in complying with permits or some kind of an infringement notice it is really importantly about reducing risk so putting in place corrective actions um, having a clear sense of what's more important and yeah, putting in place requirements under regulations codes of conduct so it's different to EIA because EIA is done prior to development or expansion of some action. Auditing is done on existing facilities or operations. EIA attempts to predict the impact. Auditing is measuring current activities or the immediate past history. EIA is triggered by legislation when somebody applies to do something. EIA is triggered. Auditing it can be imposed, but it's often a more informal, usually voluntary process. EIA is firmly in the public arena where public get to have a say as part of natural justice. It's assessed by experts and we've heard from the EPA quite extensively. Auditing can be something that's done very much in house. If you're part of a ISO, for example, process then that certification engenders some confidence that a good process has been gone through but <clears throat> the results are generally kept in confidence and there's no public scrutiny so the objectives of an environmental audit is generally to reduce pollution and waste to improve working conditions to measure impacts um, green, I'm not sure about the inclusion of green on this slide, but to, to develop more friendly products and services. And it might be about your image and marketing as much as anything. So audits follow a particular pattern. And this is a slide from Lauren Krawoken, who has taught in environmental impact assessment until this year, where you do the planning, you figure out who needs to be involved. So depending on the particular case study, you need the right skills. You need to understand the legislative and regulatory environment. You need to make sure that you talk to management, that you know what you're facing in terms of the site and the extent of the operations. You need to actually collect the data and that might be more than once. This all needs to be pulled together. It needs to be um, evaluated, a report written and recommendations very clear this is not normally done for free um, and yeah it, it, can, it can be done within an organization but even then there's still a cost in terms of staff time and resources ah so these slides are from a lecture that was given in EIA by an EIA graduate who came back some years later um, Daniel Todd, who worked for a consultant when he finished his geology degree and got into environmental management systems, risk assessment and auditing as his profession. He still works with GHD via uh, projects in the Pacific, um, the Beijing office and is now in Perth. So this is his slides from some years ago now <clears throat> where he was part of a big environmental audit program on Pacific Islands, many of them quite remote. And so this was a checklist pulled from some of his documentation around the kind of things that they needed to look at. So the, the actual site, the management of the site, um, the material throw, flow through that site in terms of liquid, solid waste, air emissions, noise, any kind of management around emergencies on that site, any history in terms of convictions and complaint it may or may not have included transport um, there there's been a pretty um, patchy history in terms of actually using audits to ensure compliance with environmental duties and to 
bring about prosecutions. So generally, the fines for breaching permits and breaching regulations are not all of that much of a disincentive and something that a, at least a large company could probably incorporate into their budget, which is not the way it's supposed to work. So here's a couple of examples, um, a little bit older now, where there were some more substantial fines given, but these were quite serious breaches where a New South Wales concrete batching plant put all these fines into the river, tried to deny it. Um, it was really clear what was going on. You could see the discoloration in the water. The company itself ended up being fined 75000 and the direct 15000 but depending on the size of the operation, this is possibly not a lot more than a slap on the wrist. Um, in some cases, and again, this is all changing to make some of these disincentives a little bit stronger. There was some jail time for the responsible officer um, for zinc plating effluent ending up in a wetland. Um, and there were some more substantial fines. Again, this is some years ago now where a, ca a caravan park owner discharged raw sewage into the river and got caught. So in case of his operation, these were big fines because this wasn't a big business. So in the case where something does go wrong, um, environmental auditing and this paper trail can help a company show due diligence. So it can help show that processes have been in place even though something has gone wrong. And all of these systems are no guarantee that something isn't going to go wrong. So um, it shows you know, who needs to do what, who has the responsibility. Um, it, it shows how things need to be reported, lines of communication. It sets out where records are kept, how records are kept. And so all of this can come in very handy if something does happen. And uh, this can be produced as evidence in case of prosecution. So... This is, as part of uh, implementing audit results, it does need, it's best if it's embedded in an environmental management system where there's a policy and training and monitoring emergency procedures. Um, so this will fit into a bigger system in the case of bigger organisations. Um, environmental Impact Assessment, this unit has been involved in audits over the years. Um, we used to go on site at Nearstar to see what they were doing and so this is an environmental impact assessment from could be like eight or nine years ago now with on the left Todd the um, senior environmental officer and so they used to talk us through some of their programs and quality control. We now do this on site at uni as part of the university's um, auditing procedure. You can learn how to be an auditor. Um, this is an example from a course, I'm not sure whether it's still running, but some years ago that a um, student shared with us. So this was a three-day course where they learned how to evaluate emissions from air, water, waste and noise, how to identify and prioritise issues that need to be investigated, how to develop a system for collecting evidence, um, how to help a company um, articulate issues that might be associated with risks, accidents and show due diligence and how to embed all of this auditing in a bigger environmental management system process. So as part of those three days, <clears throat> this is what went on, the kind of thing that's offered over four and a half days currently by PricewaterhouseCoopers, other big um, it's similar firms where you start with a kind of a scene setting around how this regulatory system might work, how to plan an audit, how to establish a team, um, how to actually do the audit. And again, this would be a really brief overview and auditors um, might need to get more specific skills. Uh, again, it depends a little bit where you are. You might need to be a generalist in Tasmania as opposed to work in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Uh, but this kind of gives you some idea of what you might need to do to get certified to do this as part of your profession. So 
So this was a brief introduction, but you should have some idea of what and when environmental auditing is and when it's used, that you can become an accredited environmental auditor. It does cost to do that. Um, sometimes you might do it informally as part of your role within an organisation. You should have some idea, particularly after we do the actual waste audit at uni, some of the ins and outs of actually doing an audit. And if you can have a look around online and provide some examples of environmental audits, that would be kind of thing that you could post to Milo.